Hot. He likes it. <laughs> he likes it. Daddy, Daddy likey? I like it. You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. Now, this is a, a biracial American history podcast. Each week, I, hand haver, maker of love, <laughs> stern dog father, <sighs> Dave Anthony, reads a story from American history to his friend. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Can we make a rule? That let's, let's not talk about our sex lives in the top of the show anymore. Let's uh, say that's a thing we did once and we realized is not what I we want like it, and that the audience doesn't want that. And I think a lot of people listening got a really great image. You know what I mean? I'm just saying the fact that I'm letting hand have her go yeah, yeah, is yeah, a yeah. testament to how messed up well, the second one hands, was. I got hands, don't I? Don't it, I? Do it, I have it, hands? Yeah. Some people don't. Yeah, that's true, but again, so, I don't know. I'm just putting it out there that I'm, I'm one of the people with hands. All right. I also make love. Ugh, okay. <laughs> I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait, is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tickly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. And a five-part coefficient. <laughs> Come on, the place. Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. I see done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Wow. That's a great introduction. Wow. It's a great song. It's a great song. It's nice because well, we don't normally wear the cans. We we're don't. Wearing the cans we're wearing the cans. There's some other shooting happening, so we want to make sure we can hear it. Film. And there's two dogs clear. here. We live in Three a world dogs. now. We live in a world now where when you say there's a shooting here, we need to say someone's filming something. That's right. So Apologies. let's be specific. There, we're, there. Uh, if you would like to watch how uh, dynamic two guys uh, talking how in the, the juice studio is, made. is with the earphones on this mm-hmm. time, it's not how you say it. Yeah. Uh, you can go to the All Things Comedy YouTube page yeah. and check out some of the other stuff there. We got a thing called Trash Tunes where we watch yep. weird cartoons, and, uh, and there's a bunch of other good content on there. So. Have at it. Have at it. Get get down on it. Oh, and let me say this. I'll be at uh, Cap City Comedy in Austin, Texas, September 4th through the 7th. So that's not this weekend, the following weekend. I'll be in Austin uh, at Cap City, which is an awesome club. So come on out. You should you should come out for that. I think that's important. Yeah, thanks. Do you want to uh, talk about our, our, um, our tour dates? Yes, I do, obviously. Um, yeah. We're going to be on tour. Uh, we'll be uh, in... Um, in Europe, uh, starting uh, in November, we're going to be in Stockholm, Oslo, Amsterdam, uh, Copenhagen, yep. Dublin, Cardiff, Birmingham, London, Glasgow, a bunch. Go to dollopodcast.com and look for our tour dots. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. And then we got dates here, too. We'll be yeah. in uh, Boise, Madison, Sacramento, Milwaukee. Go to dollopodcast.com and there's a little tour thing going on that. And then you can find it's a tour thing. Stuff. Story thing. All right. Uh, so I want to talk about something really quick. Um, there's been uh, a lot of a lot of stuff going on with podcast and uh, podcast and sourcing, and it's in the news and stuff. So, um, so I think a lot of podcasters are not familiar with sort of uh, the rules, which uh, I think we are one of them. Um, you know, we source everything. Uh, we put a link in every um, every description of every show to link to stuff. Uh, journalists, you know, w- would like more to happen. Um, so we're going to start following the lead of like what, uh, my favorite murder does and last podcast on the left. So at the end of each episode, I'll read out the sources, um, just to give props to those guys who are doing a lot of work. Yeah. Cause it, it, you know, there's, there's a, there's a legal thing and there's an ethical thing and, and you know, we were told just do this. It's the, how you do it. It's legal. Yeah. So we're going to do more. Yeah. And then you I can also wanna... see those on the iTunes uh, yeah, when you go to the actor, and I don't want to upset anybody. We're trying to do the right thing here, and we're yeah. trying to we're trying to do everything. It's just that you know we're stumbling along and figuring stuff out as we go. Yeah, it's it's just you know it's the way it is. Yes, and I you know you got it. Yes, I do. You do. Uh, this has got to be too loud. Uh, on that note, uh, the writer we based the episode "The Welfare Queen" on has a new book out. Josh Levin called "The Queen: The Forgotten Life Behind an American Myth," and it's all about that fucking story and. So if you like that, it's supposed to be amazing. The Washington Post said it read like a detective story, and it's on Audible and shit. So it's supposed to be fucking great. All right, there you go. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. Um, we are brought to you by, by Lowell, Lowell Herb, Herb Company. Company. Yeah, or as you say in England, Herb. Yeah. 
I've I'll, I've never been able to figure out which one it actually is in which country. Well, people will tell you. Lowell Farms is a small California-based cannabis company that has some of the best-selling cannabis products in the state with their Lowell Smokes, a pre-roll pack with seven hand-rolled half-gram smokes. That sounds mm. good, right? Mm-hmm. Lowell is devoted to high quality. Some guy the other day said he missed it when I used to smoke pot on the show. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Lowell is devoted to high quality, clean, and organic cannabis. They have triple lab tested from the start uh, before it recently became law. Not only does Lowell have its own farm, but also partners and employs dozens of uh, farms up and down the California coast, which Good. is very nice. Yeah. Responsibility and education is an important part of the Lowell brand, recreational but responsible and informed consumption. Uh, I know the guy who owns this company, one of the owners, and he's a really good guy, and I fucking fully trust him. And you gotta, you have to trust where you're pot comes from these yeah. days. You just do. Yeah. Uh, the Lowell Herb uh, Pledge. Only grow their flowers with organic fertilizer and never use synthetic pesticides. Pay our farmers living wage. Only use natural materials from seed to sale that are recycled and from renewable resources. Must be over 21 to purchase for recreational use. Lowell Herb Company, man. Get on it. Um, Smoke yeah. that ganj, brah. Okay. That's aggressive. Yeah. I don't know if Smoke we want to. Smoke that okay. ganja. Right. Okay. Ganja, ganja. Stop. <laughs> I speak on behalf of the audience. <laughs> we're also what? Take the cans All right, can them up, can them off. Uh, we're also brought to you by Quip, uh, world's greatest toothbrush. Yes, I think it's called. Um, hey, look, the best way to ease back into your post-summer routine is start it up before September, especially if you're headed back to school, which I am. Yeah, you are. I'm Simplify gonna the get morning. That doctorate. Yeah. Simplify the morning and evening now with a simple electric toothbrush from Quip. I'm a huge. I love. I'm a quipper. I've had electric toothbrushes before. Yes, I same. We both had a lot other electric toothbrushes before the quip. And they don't even compare. The quip is the best. It's way, it's not even It's compar- a superior brush. It's a superior brush. Uh, it has um, a built-in two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides and help you clean your Mine mouth. Mine cooks evenly. for me. Mine it, will yours, cook me dinner. cooks. Yeah. Uh, mine will watch some of the shows I don't want to watch. Yeah, yeah. Mine's yeah. a good hang. <laughs> I've been hanging out with my quip a lot lately, actually. <laughs> So you need that 30-second thing because 90% of us don't brush for the full two minutes or don't clean evenly. Right. Um, I do like a 30-minute brush. Yes. Uh, brush heads You've are, actually been told to stop that. I have. Yes. By many doctors. Yes. Uh, brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5. It's a friendly reminder when it's time for a refresh and to stay committed to your own health because 75% of us apparently use worn-out old bristles that are ineffective. It's interesting. Right? That's weird. Uh, they have a kid's brush now. The new brush is the same as our original version, just tweaked for size down mouths. Kids are inspired to brush better and often, uh, more often with oral care. That looks and feels like the products the adults in their life use, and they're proud to use Quip. You know, some people say Quip is so good for kid teeth that the baby teeth don't even fall out. <laughs> There's some, there have been a few that's stories right. of that. They're staying in now. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that's why we love Quip. We're big fans. Um, I love the sticky thing you stick on the mirror. I've yeah. told you guys that a million times. But I also like the move up, down, 30-second thing. It's all good. Uh, that's uh, that's why I love Quip and why it's perfect for getting back into a routine. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash dollop right now, you can get your refill, uh, your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash dollop. Boom. Boom. Uh, we are also brought to you by Policy Genius. Did you know that September is National Life Insurance Awareness Month? Yes. I've been celebrating it for a while. You've been celebrating, meaning you're not having sex during it? I'm not having sex during it. <laughs> <laughs> most people are not aware that that's what I'm doing. And also most people aren't aware that September is National Life Insurance Month. Right. It doesn't get around as much as it should. No, people no, should people aren't talking about, about it. I give out cards. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> In fact, most people aren't thinking of you. <laughs> in fact, most people aren't uh, aware that that they need life insurance at all, and that's why forty percent of Americans don't have it. Uh, if you have a family, it's a really good thing to have. Or a cat. Um, but look, getting life insurance doesn't have to be difficult or expensive. Right now, prices are the lowest they've been in twenty years, and Policy Genius has made it easier than ever to get covered. So uh, you, you go online, uh, you shop for life insurance, and in minutes, you just get quotes that you compare uh, from top insurance insurers to find the best price. Right. Which is what, that's what it should be. Yes. Instead of having a guy come over and talk to you. Once you apply, that happened to me. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team will handle You're gonna all- You're going to die soon, bud. <laughs> Can I come in? Yeah, I didn't like it. 
Uh, it will handle all the paperwork and red tape, and Policy Genius doesn't just make life insurance easy. They can also help you find the right home insurance, auto insurance, disability insurance. It's all there. It's all happening. Uh, I recommend life insurance. I do, especially if you have a family. Um, you know you know why. Our society doesn't take care of people, so we got to do this. Yeah. Right? If you need life insurance, but yeah, you, you just haven't gotten around to it, National Life Insurance Awareness Month is a good time as any to get started. Go to policygenius.com, get quotes, and apply in minutes. You can do the whole thing on your phone right now. Policy Genius, the way to compare and buy life insurance. Yeah, baby, go French at the end. What's up? You my girl. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, we're also brought to you by Squarespace. We obviously enjoy Squarespace. Uh, it is the website company, and yep. we use it use it for your personal website. Yep. I use it for my personal website. Yep. We use it for the Dollop sources. I use it for my Garecore. Uh, Garecore is hot very energy, energy hot energy time website. Yep. And uh, and then we also use it for our our just regular Dollop podcast dot com. Yes. So all of them. <laughs> And um, and then I I use it. Uh, okay, I have a this is a lie. Okay, uh, <laughs> look, you can uh, you can turn your cool idea into a website. You can showcase your work. You can blog or publish content, sell products, promote your online business. All of it. It's a website. You guys know how websites work. Um, they got great templates. That's why I, I got involved in the business over there. Um, the ability to customize look and feel settings products with more than just a few clicks. Uh, nothing to patch your upgrade ever. Free and secure hosting, built-in search, and uh, you know, optimization. It's all there. It's all there. 24-7, 24/7 award-winning customer service. That's important. It's pretty good. It's all the time. Uh, so look, man, if you're ready to start a business or just start a blog or whatever, it's time. Let's get it. Let's get it. Destiny calls you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code dollop to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com, enter code dollop. 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 Yeah. yeah. Be clear. But I call it dollop. Sure. Um, we're changing the name of the podcast. Oh, that's weird. Hadn't been discussed. Oh, you um, know what we should also mention is that we have another version of this show about the United Kingdom and England. Uh, that you can find. It's called... What are the what's the, the Dollop uh, England and UK. Yeah, it's an easy and title. people were getting mad, and I was like, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, <laughs> now it has become a real joke for everybody. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we that's uh, episodes that are just about uh, England. It's like, a, what are we we're gonna do? We're going to do 10, we're going to do 10, uh, maybe eight. We're going to do 10, probably, it might be eight um, episodes. Uh, so it'll just come out once in a while as a season, yeah. and then we'll probably put the live ones up that we record in England right. on, that, on that feed. Yeah. It's just a way to have another feed. We're you know try to jump into another a new nation. continent. Is England a continent? I think it's a continent. Uh, we're going to try to jump into the, the continent of England. It's not by any means a continent, but we should. It's start surrounded the show. by water, correct? Let's just start. It's a continent. Let's start. May eighteenth, eighteen eighty nine. Our time to shout. Jesus Christ. Right. Thomas Midgley Jr. was born in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Now Midgley. That's a, that's a weird place. Beaver, Beaver Falls. Falls? Just beavers falling. Oh, all it's over horrible. The place. Instead of like the falling rock signs, it's like falling beavers. It is horrifying. Oh, my God. Hitting the ground. Oh, there's thousands of bodies. There's be dead beavers everywhere. <laughs> it never ends. Oh, my it's just God. just falling beavers. Oh. Yeah. I don't know why people live there. Oh, that's the smell. Oh, it's horrifying. A horrifying smell. But the dogs love it. The dogs have never been happier. <laughs> His father worked at a steel production plant and was an inventor. His mother, Hattie, sure, yeah, was the daughter of an inventor uh, who was quite wealthy. So he so came from an inventing family. Sure, an inventor, of an in in inventorite. And yes, sure, not right. In 1896, they moved to Columbus, Ohio, where uh, Tom Senior got a job in wheel and tire manufacturing. Okay, so they're fucking killing it. Yeah, and sure. Thomas graduated from Cornell University in 1911 with a PhD in mechanical engineering. Okay. He went back to Ohio and started a business with his dad, uh, the Midgley Tire and Rubber Company. Okay. So they're starting their, they're starting their own biz. Sure. It's going to be fucking great. Mm. Uh, Thomas got married. He had a couple of kids. Okay. Uh, and then the business failed in 1916. You just, you just told me that everything was going to be okay. Set you up. Took you down. Immediately. Yeah. Sometimes it's fast. Yeah. Uh, Thomas had a friend who then hired him as an assistant at the Dayton Research Laboratories. Here we go. Which had just been bought by GM. Here we go. What? It's just That's interesting. Fine. No. You're it's a starting a friend. Okay. We've got a we've got a gray figure in the shadows coming to life. <laughs> a friend. At the lab, Thomas worked on problems facing combustible engines. Okay. 
because at that time, you know, cars are new. Uh -huh. Trying to work out the kinks. Right. People don't like the exploding car at this time. Well, uh, this is when uh, cars had this horrible problem called knocking. The engine would make big knocking noise. Uh -huh. Clang, clang, clang. Even the best cars, the Cadillacs, they make horrible noises. And okay, uh, so bad that at times drivers would think the car was like breaking apart. Okay, um, and the noise happened because gas would mix with air and then heat ignite and explode. Okay, so they it, they and sometimes drivers get so freaked out they lose control of the car and crash. Well, so. that that driver does not deserve to no. be put in the category. You try to have a big explosion. Overreacting. Over yeah, but still. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a pull over situation. It's not a <laughs> oh god the cliff like Ted. What are you doing? Oh, oh, how do the crashes work? Huh? You know, Ted, he's just like, oh, God, oh, the cliff. Oh, there's a cliff now. Oh, I'm going to go over it. I should have prayed. He says all that? Yeah, he's like, yeah, you need some. Well, especially in like the podcast version yeah. of his, Ted's story. Sure. You need to have a lot of Ted's self talk. Yeah, it needs yeah. to be a little new heart. So Ted's a radio play. Ted, car no, he's going to tell you the scene and the <laughs> setting and the other characters in the room and what he's feeling and what he's physically feeling and doing. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, no, we crashed! Oh, we're we're dying! Oh, we're dying down here! Oh, we're dying! Oh, there's so Is much blood! Is anybody down there? Oh yeah, sir, sir! I'm having trouble breathing. Look at my bow tie. I'm the villain. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do radio plays. Oh no, it's going great! <laughs> Don't call out what we're doing. So, uh, so they need to stop that explosion thing. They need to put something. How in How dangerous gasoline. is the explosion? Thing? Well, it's not. It's not dangerous. It just, just makes the car. So it's a vanity yeah, problem. It, it slows it down. It's just a problem. No, it's 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 everything. It slows I the know. car down. And, okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, first, he tried a kerosene-powered Delco light engine, which was used on farm equipment. Uh, nothing. Tons of knocking. Okay. Then he added iodine to the fuel. Sure, I was going to suggest that. Uh, it worked, uh, but he knew iodine would not work as a long-term additive gas to sure. gas. It's not going to. It's not going to hang with gas. No, it won't. So he started testing elements similar to iodide, including camphor, aluminum chloride, and melted butter. Well, the last one is. Uh, <laughs> so he's out of ideas. He's like, should we just throw some butter in it? See what that does? I mean, I know it's. I just have a lot of butter. I mean, he's literally just at home in the morning putting butter on his toast. Honey, he's the like, cars. Fuck it. What's wrong with I the just, car? I, I buttered the motor. I, I am a scientist. I put a bunch of butter in the car and I've uh, ruined it. I have, have you slept? I have not slept, but no. I. All of our dairy products are now in the car, and um, I put some. Milk. I put a bunch of cheese in the tailpipe, and. Um, I've just... Honey, maybe you're not a scientist. No, but I'll tell you what. I just think if we make the car a sandwich... Yeah. We got a shot. Okay, that's not... I'm going to go nap and see if that makes sense in three yeah, to four hours. Good. Yeah, good. 12. Okay. Uh, so he started... Uh, so he's testing those elements. This went on for six years. He's just testing different elements for six years. Okay. Quote, most of them had no more effect than splitting than spitting in the Great Lakes. Yeah, but I mean, butter's a crazy. Well, he he's clearly just fucking throwing shit at the board at right. this point. So he did try shit eventually. He did try shit. Okay. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, he's like, uh, the manure doesn't work either, and the smell's horrifying. People are like, do you want to go home? <laughs> what is that? What's how's your wife? Then in December 1921, he tried a tetrathylate. I hope that's how you say it. T E L, as it's known. Okay. It's lead. Okay. Worked great. Mm. Worked great. Well, may I? Problem was, it's lead. Yeah, it's there's, it's not. I say keep. I would say let's go back to the butter board. Yeah, I liked what we were doing over there. Yeah, butter was good. Uh, people had known lead was poisonous since a hundred BC, <laughs> so a little while. So people have been kind of on to lead sure. for a little bit. Yes. So the idea of testing lead is like, all right, well, I guess this one's just for you to know if it's possible <laughs> to solve because we can't a, use it. I'm gonna put arsenic in it. Well. In ancient Rome, it was common knowledge that lead could cause in insanity and death. Civil engineer Vitruvius, 2,000 years ago, quote, water conducted through earthen pipes is more wholesome than that through lead. This may be verified by observing the workers in lead who are of pallid color. So 2,000 years ago. The, the, it, <laughs> We're pretty hip to be lead being bad 2,000 it, it years It really ago. makes what happened in Michigan and Flint even more oh. upsetting that it's been known for that yeah. long. Yeah, I don't I don't want to do a Flint dollop because I think I'm just going to cry. 
Yes. Like it's. Oh yeah. There's a bad moment. The fact in that, that story. none of those motherfuckers are in jail. No, the fact no, that, that they is not in yeah, fucking jail. Yeah. I'm fucking. Although, did you watch Michael uh, Michael uh, Moore's movie? Yeah. When Obama takes a sip of it's water, tough. I can't. It's tough. In 1678, workers who made white lead for paint suffered from quote dizziness in the head with continuous great pain in the brows, blindness, and stupidity. Okay, so there's. Uh... <laughs> We should hey. go over here now, baby. Oh, man. I don't know what's up with that paint. Uh, uh, just eating sand. I'm eating my lunchbox. No, don't eat that. What the hell it's happened to metal. these guys? Are we paying these guys? I'm a clam. Okay. Lead miners would often go mad and even die. And scientists believe low-level long-term exposure was also bad. Okay, so, so. we have lead... In the motor, that's not great. So tetraethyl lead was first discovered by a German chemist in 1854. Okay. But it was not used commercially because of, quote, its known deadliness. Sure. I think we are just on the same page. We are (laughs) totally agreeing that lead is not a good option, a viable path for this. Lead is odorless, colorless, and tasteless. Lead does not break down over time. Okay, so we're just talking all downside. Those are the best kinds of poisons. Right, the ones you can't ever get rid of. Yeah, Yeah. permapoison. Permapoison, yeah. Uh, It does not vaporize, and it never disappears. Since It's a lot like the band. (laughs) This reminds me of the band Fish. Fish. (laughs) uh, Now people are going to be mad, right? What? Fish heads. They're going to be mad at me I said that. I think you'll be okay. Since the 1920s, the uh, I don't know what Marin said on his podcast, but he was just like, "Look, guys, I don't like Marvel characters. It's dumb." Like, oh Jesus, <laughs> he just yeah. had some tweet where he's yeah. like, <laughs> "Okay, Marvel's stupid. Just get off my back." One of the ones you tweeted, yeah, like 20 minutes later, like, "I wonder what happened with that." Oh God, oh God. <laughs> um. So, uh, since the 1920s, the lead industry had been fighting bans and even warnings on paint can labels. Okay. The lead industry marketed its poison to children and parents, stating that lead paint was safe. And again, we've known yeah. for... 2,000. <laughs> Just 2,000. Yeah. So it's quite a, it's quite a That's time. That's a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, paint ads... It's long enough for us to be like, maybe we were wrong again. We should probably not use this. Let's try it. Paint ads were printed in the Saturday Evening Post, Good Housekeeping, National Geographic, and other magazines, as well as... Local newspapers. Dutch boy costumes were sent to kids on Halloweens, and they oh, that's messed printed up. coloring books that showed kids how to prepare it. Oh, good Lord. Just getting kids to They're have fun with lead paint. Marketing lead paint specifically to children? Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. There's not much else to say about that. The only that. paint you can drink. <laughs> come on, kids. Come drink your paint. Uh, it was marketed as an essential, lead was marketed as, as an essential to America's economic growth. Oh, my God. By the 1920s, lead was all over standard middle class homes. It was in pipes, paint, telephones, ice boxes, vacuums, irons, washing machines, but, dolls, toys, bag be- but, bean bags, baseballs, and fishing lines. But we know that it's bad. Yeah, we know it's bad. So it's come back but because. Some people, but because someone owns it. Business. Because you can sell it. Right. So right. my, let's do it. Right. So let's do it all now, and then we'll figure out the not later. Yeah, yeah, we'll it's figure not out your later. problem. Yeah. But scientists were always warning of the dangers of lead. The proof was so solid. S- scientists, we're lucky they hang around. <laughs> I mean, they just have to be very frustrated. All right. So Thomas Midgley is very aware of the dangers of lead. Okay. As was GM. Sure. No one knows exactly why the company decided to push. T-E-L. That's tough to hear. Instead of uh, ethyl alcohol, Uh huh. which also stopped engine knocking. And is less uh, of a poison? Not pat. Yes. Okay. Not a poison. Okay. Uh, doesn't put his toxic stuff out into the air. Now, I'm going to guess there's a price difference. Well, any farmer can distill ethyl alcohol from oh, grain. Oh, there it is. Okay. So it is. So anybody can just make. You can right, just make right. you gas can, for your car. The solve could just be done by the people themselves, and there's no real money in that. It had been alcohol, ethyl alcohol had been around as a fuel for years. The first internal combustion engine in 1826 used alcohol and turpentine. Before the Civil War, alcohol was the most used lighting fuel in the country. 
Okay. Alcohol powered the first engine by the German inventor Nicholas Otto, and by 1920, alcohol was a proven automo- automotive fuel. Great. And still... What? Let's go with lead. <laughs> Tests in 1906 uh, by the Department of Agriculture proved its power and economic benefits. In 1907 and 1908, the U.S. Geological Survey and the Navy performed 2,000 tests on alcohol and gasoline engines, and they concluded higher engine compression could be achieved with alcohol instead of gasoline. Oh, boy. (laughs) They noted a total absence of smoke and bad odors, and Henry Ford built his first car to run on Farm alcohol, like you, the farmer could make. Uh huh. In 1929, his Model A car had a knob, so you could adjust the carburetor on gas or alcohol. Oh my god! <laughs> it's amazing that I didn't know any. Like, we just live in such a world that the propaganda is so massive that nobody knows that. Oh my god, that's tough. <laughs> Even Thomas Midgley was on board the alcohol train, as I call it. In 1920, when he drove like a car... Like your father. <laughs> <laughs> he got off. In 1921, he drove a car from Dayton to Indianapolis with a gas alcohol blend with 30% alcohol. He said, quote, alcohol has a tremendous advantage and tremendous disadvantages, including clean burning and freedom from any carbon deposit oh. and tremendously high compression under which alcohol will operate without knocking. The available this- horsepower is much greater than alcohol with gasoline. This is really tough. <laughs> Why? It, is there some problem? Yes, yes. We're living in the Biff Back to the Future 2 one. <laughs> but all these c- companies, GM specifically, wanted to sell gas. Oh, and ethyl alcohol could not be patented. Oh, man. And dis- distributed uh, while TEL could. Uh so Midgley uh, suddenly forgot about the greatness of alcohol. The day-to-day test diaries of him testing all those for six uh-huh. fucking years have never been released to the public. Hmm. An archivist in the GM archive once said the archives had been, quote, sanitized. Good, 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 good. Well, good. Good <laughs> start. And numbers are all over the place. Once Thomas said he tested 2,500 compounds before landing on TL. Another time he said 33,000. Another time he said 14,991. So his numbers are just getting fudged. It's just for, fucking, yeah, right, nonsense. Right. TL became the solution Thomas and GM went with to stop engine knocking, <laughs> even though there was this other thing that you could yes, just make. Yes, even though there's this other grain, thing. From grain. Yeah. yeah. Even though it was poison and ethanol was not poison. Again, that divide is just really hard to get over. <laughs> Uh, the company chose to kill and harm people for profit, which is weird. Allegedly. I've never heard, I've never heard of that happening in our capitalist system. No. I am a little, like, it is funny. Well, not funny. It's horrifying that uh, I have felt like this has been a problem for less time than that. Oh, right. I know you, you know. Mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to hide the fact that they were using lead, which was, again, uh, poison. Right. TEL was named ethyl. Ethyl. Wait, what's the other one called? Eth- uh, uh, oh God, uh, where is it? What is it called? I, I should. I can find it here. Uh, 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 ethanol. Okay, so ethyl and ethanol. Yeah. Um, so they called it. I mean, ethanol is still around. We still yeah, use yeah. it, but it's like I think it's like five or ten percent in some places. But it's not. And ethyl is just TEL. Yeah. So. Yeah, so they, so named, they made a similar yeah, name. That, oh, interesting. You caught up on that. And mm-hmm. have labeled the poison one similar to ethanol. That's right. And called it just instead Ethel. a grandma name. Mm-hmm. Meet Ethel. She, she won't hurt you. She nice. Sit on her lap. She nice. Give her a kiss. Your brain's gone. <laughs> so they start marketing it. God There's no it. mention of lead in any of the advertising or reports. Of course not. Now, some they site, know. Yeah. I mean, how, yeah. it's so messed up that they know that much. Yeah. Well, don't tell anyone. Well, let's not say lead. That's I mean, what, it's lead. Have you met not Ethel the walrus? Look at Grammy. Yeah. Scientists, uh, some scientists were freaked out. They pushed the government to investigate the public health implications. <laughs> One wrote a letter to the Public Health Service and asked them to conduct investigations 
but the director responded that would be too time consuming and they should just get the information from the industry. Yeah, that's true. Go get that's go go to the when, company. When has that ever been a problem? Never. No, never. that's why all those investigations companies doing themselves always yeah. turn over great change. Well, a company will be like, oh, you're right. I was doing bad. Yeah. Yeah. This thing I was going to make money on. It sucks. Yeah. yeah. Thomas told us, uh, Thomas Minchin told the Sur Surgeon General that, quote, the average street will probably be so free from lead that it will be impossible to detect it or its absorption. He's saying that. He's saying, so most of the roads are dirt. Yeah. So he's saying that even with lead coming out of these exhaust pipes, that it's not going to go into the ground. Uh. Okay. Which is let's exactly just, where it will go. Yeah, well let's just let it let's just let that one fly. But he also conceded that quote, no actual experimental data has been taken. So Good. zero research. Good. Zero research. It's a gut thing. I got a feeling. Because you don't want to do any research into the health consequences of putting lead in there. No. General Motors then funded a government bureau to conduct research and <laughs> added a clause saying that GM had to approve the findings. <laughs> What? Uh, <laughs> it's just very fucked up. <laughs> the car and oil industry jumped on the TEL solution for engine knock. Oh, my God. Here G it is. GM uh, quickly built production facilities. The wonders of what they were calling ethyl were advertised. It was a big success. To people freaked out by engine knocking, it was the magical product. It was also less expensive than adding ethanol to gas. Uh huh. So did people know to do the ethanol thing? Yeah, but this is but but this is it's like being, when they, it's like when like, they told women to smoke when they had yeah, babies. Yeah, right. Like, or it's, I, it's, you know what it reminds me of too is the radium girls. Yeah, totally. Lick your brushes, ladies. Lick your brushes. <laughs> yeah. In 1922, ethyl gasoline seemed like a wonder product. Lead was, so everyone's just being told this is it. This is the thing that's going to stop. And it's the not hurting you. Lead was less expensive than oh, I said that. Um, that year, Thomas had to turn down speaking engagements at the American Chemical Society, which he uh, was getting the Nichols Medal for invention in 1923. He turned that down? Um, no, he, was, he wasn't going to speaking engagements. He wasn't oh. um, showing up. Yeah, because he doesn't want to be like, he probably wants to lie behind closed doors. Well, lie because he's ill. Oh, it lay. Quote, after about a year's work in organic lead, I find that my oh, lungs... Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? I find that my lungs have been affected and that it is necessary to drop all work and get a large supply of fresh air. Okay, now for the next part of your sentence, he which went, is... He went to Miami to heal. No. He went to Miami to heal. You say more. And there he stayed and healed for a year. Okay. Before he left, he assured the Surgeon General that, quote, the average street will probably be free from life. <laughs> oh, good Lord. What a fuck, oh, these people. How do you do it? I don't know. A Dr. Krauss of the Institute of Technology in Germany said TEL was a, quote, creeping and malicious poison and that it had killed a member of his dissertation committee. But Thomas was undeterred. He wrote from Florida to his boss, the GM, that they could sell 20% of the gasoline in the country, but it would actually be more. GM had a monopoly with the patents, so the company would make money for every gallon of gas sold. In April, Thomas was made VP. <laughs> oh, my God. In a huge PR win, leaded gasoline was used by the top three cars at uh, the Indian Indianapolis 500 on Memorial Day 1923. It's just all these people just standing in the stands, just inhaling lead. Like, it's fine. I'm pretty sure before that, all, all the cars were using just straight ethyl ethyl alcohol. I, I think that that's what they were doing. They were I, using ethanol? And the, yeah, I think they were just using straight up alcohol before that and i think that's still I, I might be crazy but i thought I, maybe it was just the way one thing was written but it felt like some cars still do but i might be totally right like it well it's good that yeah it's but still it was, it's nice that lead gets a comeback story yeah gm signed exclusive contracts for leaded gasoline with standard oil of new jersey standard oil of indiana and gulf oil for the east coast midwest and southern distribution okay so <laughs> in august DuPont's TEL plant in New Jersey. Oh, opens. good. Let's get, yeah, here we go. Let's get some more cool people involved. Within 30 days, a worker died from lead poisoning. Oh, great. Okay. And DuPont, being rich and having sway over the media, was able to cover it up. Sure. 
Then one of the first lo- uh, uh, production lines in Ohio was shut down after two employees died. <laughs> okay. It's fine. It doesn't seem fine. It's fine. It this seems is what happens like, with alcohol, too. No, it isn't. You told me the contrary earlier. At another plant in New Jersey, there were more fatalities. Hey, it's lead. The workers kept hallucinating insects, and the lab was known as, quote, the house of butterflies. Okay. So, Dave, <laughs> let's... Come on. Let, can we be grown-ups for a minute, please? What? <laughs> People are tripping their balls off from your poison so much that you have a room called the House of Butterflies. Well, they're seeing butterflies. They're not there. <laughs> How was work today? I see butterflies. Oh, I don't, what does your husband do? He works on cars. <laughs> and he saw butterflies? Yes. he. Yeah, I guess they have a butterfly room. They're there. all seeing butterflies yeah, now. Yeah, they love it. It's great. It's a great they job. They bought him a butterfly room. Who would want to work with see. butterflies? Yeah. That's what they probably picture. Another one of the earliest factories to take TEL was Standard Oil Facility of Bayway, New Jersey. So GM got in touch with the U.S. Bureau of Mines in September 1923 because no other government agency was helping and the Bureau was as corrupt as they come. The Bureau of Mines was just there to promote business. If you can imagine. It's shocking. If you can imagine in America an agency that was supposed to oversee something Mm -hmm. actually being for business and allowing them to run. I can see it in other countries. The Bureau pushed the word for the word lead not to be used and instead to use. Well, ethanol. because it has that nasty poison. Yeah, because association. people have known for 2000 years. Yeah, so because people know use... it's poison. So if you tell them that, they're probably going to be a little hesitant to be like, hey, wait a minute. That's right. Isn't that what makes you go to the butterfly room? <laughs> In the first year, the facility, uh, the first year, um, Bayway, New Jersey facility, was making TEL. Workers became more and more fearful of going to work. Yes. They nicknamed it the Looney Gas Building. Oh, my God. I mean, come on. (laughs) How do you let, like, how is this possible? And just the fact that people need work so badly that they do that. But I also, you know what I never under, like, and it's the same thing now. It's just, like, (laughs) numbers-wise, just, you know, you got numbers. (laughs) Yeah. These are fat cats. <laughs> they don't live in clouds. <laughs> They're on Earth, too. Uh, workers at the factory uh, acted increasingly strange. Yeah. Well, they're being poisoned to death. They got moody. They had bursts of rage, unable to sleep. Yes. Yeah. Some workers started getting lost on the plant grounds and had trouble remembering their friends. Oh, my God. Larry? How do you... How do you... Yeah, careful. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> he, he just looked up. He's like, like, "What do you need, Dad?" What is that? Uh, how, how, how do you like? It's the same. It is the same dumb stuff where people just don't even think about anything with money because, in that you are compromising your workforce. Like you're like you you but definitely are, are going to be losing stuff as well because you're losing good workers or skilled workers. They don't or, care because they're, no, they don't. Everybody's expendable. But I would also think that you would if you have people walking around not knowing where they are. You're like we're paying this guy to not. Maybe we shouldn't <laughs> have a place called the fucking butterfly room. This one's not the butterfly room. This one's the looting no, no, gas, yeah. the looting gas building. Yeah, right. Sorry, I get my yeah. I get the looting gas building and the butterfly room. Several supervisors recommended to the company that the facility should be shut down. Interesting. They were freaked out by the way the increasingly by the increasingly bizarre behavior. Yeah, you don't need employees. to tell you don't need to tell me what they're freaked out by. <laughs> Which they they saw was clearly due to illness. Yes. The company did not shut down the plant. Yeah. GM pushed for TL production to be increased. Right. Some people were worried. DuPont chairman Irene DuPont wrote to GM that TEL, quote, may be killed by a better substitute or because of its poisonous character or because of its destruction, destructive action on the engine. But just a couple of months later, he wrote, quote, I have read the doctor's reports and I am not disturbed by the severity of the findings. Oh, my God. Something happened and I don't think I was reading a doctor's report. <laughs> Yeah, he got he got a report of like how much money. Yeah, he got a report of a different nature. Well, this is a lot of money. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you're right. Fuck them. Oh, let people die. Yeah, that's right. On a Thursday, a worker at the Standard Oil Bayway plant in New Jersey named Ernest Olgert started hallucinating. Oh boy. The next day, he was running around the laboratory screaming in terror. Oh God. He went home on Saturday. He became so crazy, his sister called the police. He was then taken to a hospital and forcibly restrained, and he died the next day. Can we talk about very quickly how that would probably be 
very different today. <laughs> that man would not have died in a hospital. He would have probably died in jail. Yeah, a hundred percent. He totally would have died in jail. It's yeah. a good point. Thanks. Uh, what a show. Yeah. The next week, workers in the loony gas building started collapsing, going to convulsions, having fits of violent insanity, hallucinations, tremors, and babbling deliriously. I mean, Jesus Christ. What? Like, if you are in charge at this point, you have to be like, all right, this is not sustainable. Well, hopefully they can get a couple shifts in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. If you can train them, if you can train One of the guys, the boss just puts on a butterfly suit and comes down and is just like, all right, guys, so I'm the leader of all of us, and we need you to kind of keep working through this. So trust me, my name's Ed. I'm king of the butterflies or queen or whatever it is. You guys just follow the butterflies. Yeah, over this way. Put your hands on the machines again. Come on, we're going to, let's, come on, move. I'll help you move some of them. Remember your muscle memory. Okay, there you go. Now we're doing it. it- all right. Uh, he just goes upstairs and takes off the butterfly. After. I did not fucking sign up for this <sighs> shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I had to breathe in there. <laughs> okay. So by the end of the week, four more workers from the Looney Gas Building were dead. 35 were in the hospital. My God. There were a total of 49 workers. Wow. That's a, that's a high percentage. Yeah. So I would. That's. Like if I'm doing math, I would say almost all. That's almost all your workers. <laughs> so there's like three guys who are like, hey, uh, what's the plan? Just Jeff's walking around. I'm fine. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> the building man, the manager of the building told the New York Times, quote, these men probably went insane because they work too hard. Oh, the. Uh, the. Ah, oh, it never <laughs> changes. That never changes. God. He also said the workers had also died because they worked themselves to death because of their enthusiasm for the job. This pinhole, he's trying to get it into. So much. This is such a small... Ask me how much they love the job. How much do they love the job? They pretend there are butterflies there. That's not okay. That's how much. That's a side effect of lead. No, no. Yes, yes. Pretending butterflies. Why is that guy in a butterfly outfit? Why is he back here? (laughs) Shut that door. This is when the government decided to uh, release that report on the research GM, hey, that's fun. GM funded with the agreement it had to approve the findings. Oh, uh, right. Okay. You remember that? Yeah. So this is... It came out right as the media is going crazy over what was happening at the Looney Gas Good building. news! Lead is good for you! The state of New Jersey was not impressed with uh, the explanation they got sure. from the plant and ordered the plant closed. The local district attorney called the chief medical examiner from New York City and asked if his chemistry division w- uh, could do some research into TEL. The, med- the medical examiner was on. Uh, we don't need to do research. We well, you know the answer. <laughs> Would, what it, it's lead. They, you, no. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm a medical examiner. You're a guy. You come to me. Say they were seeing butterflies. They've been seeing butterflies. It's lead. It's fucking lead. We're trying to figure out what it is. It's. They're seeing butterflies. They're calling the building loony. They're having. Let me tell you the problem. These guys are dying and not coming to work. Now, my question is, what can we do to fix that? Yeah. So, uh, not use the lead. The lead part. The We're lead. not using lead. We're using TEL. Okay. Right. The L's for it stands for lead. Well, that's not what we're using. So anyway, we moved on from that one. Outside of that. What can we do to stop these guys from dying from a butterfly overdosing? Yeah, I feel like we got got our wires crossed. It's not butterfly overdosing. They're dying from lead, the lead that you make. Why are the butterflies killing my workers? Who do they work for? That's my question. Do you think they're in the DuPont game? Uh, Okay. Who are they working for? Yeah, they are. Yeah, we got to stop the butterflies. You know what'll kill a butterfly? What? Lead. God damn it. Yeah, lead's bad for butterflies. Humans, it's fine for. No, we use not. a lot of it here. Actually, it's been killing some of our guys. Well, the butterflies have. All right, I forget what we were talking about. Ugh, smells like lead in here again. <laughs> the medical examiner was already on record as having said, "Quote: The fact that it is readily absorbed and highly poisonous was discovered in Germany about uh, in about 1854 when uh, TL was discovered, and it has not been used in the industry during most of its 70 years since then because of its known deadliness. Mm-hmm. The poison, right? Yeah, deadliness yes. is a thing that it's a poison he said lead was well known for damaging nervous systems uh, and lead vapors that were released in tl manufacturing were absorbed through the skin and inhaled into the lungs 
New York had the best forensic toxicology department in the country, and the chief chemist was known as a tenacious researcher. So for three weeks, he learned to figure out how much TL the workers had absorbed before they became ill, crazy, or dead. (laughs) He compared the first four dead to the last guy who died who had gone out screaming in a straitjacket. Oh my God. I mean, that's the way to go. Yeah. There's well, a yeah. lot of ways to go, but yeah. screaming in a straight jacket, like you're going out big. Yeah. 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 Yep. Big end. Yep. Big finish. Big vacation coming up. He found, the TL con- he found that TL concentrated in the lungs, the brain, and the bones. It was clear the lead vapor had been inhaled, and later it would be discovered masks used at the plant did not filter out the lead in the TL vapor. We're actually putting lead in the mask <laughs> uh, to kind of block the lead fumes we've got a liner of lead in there and so then these guys are able to breathe we're painting the inside with the dutch boy paint which is great paint it's for kids kids yeah. can drink it kids i don't know it. if you heard the new yeah. ad kids will eat it use it for spaghetti sauce it's dutch boy paint <laughs> so yeah kids can use it as spaghetti sauce now uh and if it made any direct contact with skin it was absorbed alarmingly fast so, essentially, our research has told us that lead is bad no. still. Um, yeah, uh, that, I'm not getting that. Yeah, that's a lot of what I'm picking up from it. Standard Oil decided to fight back and held a press conference at its Manhattan offices. The war on lead must stop! The press conference featured one Thomas Midgley who would come back. Oh, good. All right, the comeback kid. He told reporters that if ethyl was handled properly, there was nothing dangerous about it. As in not putting it in cars? Exactly. Yes. Oops, I'm sorry. Oops, I'm rusty. Nah. <laughs> what was that? It's a little Sorry, I've been, I've been <laughs> full of lead. I haven't, I haven't lied for a year. Sorry. <laughs> Thomas Midgley then washed his hands in a bowl filled with TEL. Quote, I'm taking no chances whatever, nor would I take any chances by doing that every day. Who does that remind you of? Oh, yeah. Obama yes. in Flint. When Obama drinks the... F- Obama drinks very... In a very stage staged yeah, it's really, event, it's really upsetting. Pretends off the cuff to just drink some random tap water, yeah, and it's all very fake. And as we know, yeah, <laughs> as um, we know, that story does not have a happy ending or an ending. Yet. Sorry, my. Uh, do we have a nanny situation? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Um, so. Naturally, Thomas blamed the workers at the different plants. Sure. For not protecting themselves properly. Right, because they're independent contractors. That's right. Right. Gloves and masks were readily available, and it was the workers' responsibility to wear them, Uh even though we just learned previously that the masks weren't effective. Right. A VP explained that the workers weren't well-educated men, and maybe they didn't realize working with TEL was, quote, man's work. Here's the thing. (laughs) What's happening? What? It's man's work, dude. And they're and they're like dying like ladies. Uh, I just can't. I mean, I, the. Uh, it's good times, dude. It just it is. It's good times. Uh, America has never been better. Thomas was asked about what kind of research had been done about the health effects of TEL. And he gave the same answer as he had two years before. None. We didn't do that. Why would we do that? It's great. It's lead. What's going to go wrong? Yeah. Almost all research was focused on improving the TEL formulas, not whether or not it could hurt, right. kill, kill you, right. make you see butterflies. And it can. He then rubbed TL on his hands to show it wasn't dangerous. Quote, I'm not taking any chance, whatever, nor would I take any chance doing that every day. The the New York world said Thomas frequently bathed in TEL. Okay. So (laughs) a couple things. No, he didn't. No, he doesn't. That thing he's putting his hands in, probably not TEL. Right? I don't think it was. Yeah. I don't think he would ever do it, especially not after he just came back from a yeah, year of no. almost fucking dying or whatever no, was happening. No. It's but, the Flint water. But reporters learned employees were calling it the loony gas building. And doctors told the press that the violent insanity was, quote, brought on by the gradual infiltration of lead into their systems. All right. Well, we're going to talk to some non-doctors and get their <laughs> opinions because you guys seem pretty uh, closed <laughs> off to options. Jim, you on the plant. What do you think happened? Ah, uh, well, it's pretty obvious what happened here, boss. They're all doing cocaine. God damn it, I knew it. Yeah, yeah, just a bunch of them. Vagrants. 
Anyway, Back to I'm work. dating that butterfly. <laughs> I should go over there. The New York Medical Examiner released his report. The New York City then banned the sale of TEL. Oh, come on. And the sale of, quote, any preparation containing lead or other del- deleterious substances. Uh, let's just pretend like I knew what that word is. Sure. As an additive to gasoline. Okay. So New York gets it. So did New Jersey, the state. So did Philadelphia. So did Pittsburgh. Seems like a East Coast thing. Yeah. Uh, the Bureau of Mines released a report saying ethyl was not an issue. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Clean lead. The New York Times front page headline was, quote, No peril to public seen in ethyl gas. A Bureau of Mine reports after long experiments with motor exhaust, more deaths unlikely. Mm-hmm. That's was, the end uh, of that chapter. This is the Bureau of Mines. It was a growing to, pain. That they went to because it yeah, was yeah. totally corrupt. Yeah. 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 It's like that uh, great NRA story on yeah. uh, why background checks will increase shooting. That's right. Yeah. Still, the companies agreed to... Uh, Stop making TL until they got a clean bill of health to move forward because they're getting so much shit and mm-hmm. the cities are shutting down. Sure. So a yeah. grand jury then acquitted Standard Oil of any responsibilities in the workers' illnesses and deaths. Hmm. Um, what? Yeah, this was even though a report stated the deaths were due to poisoning and that the company should start making TL again, could not, should not start making TL again until they could who's, make sure workers were safe. Who's the other lawyer? Well, it's that's just, pretty damning, but... Uh, who likes pie? I mean, there's no way they didn't just pay the jury off. Yeah, that I mean, sounds there it sounds tough. That sounds no pretty damning. Way. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, sure, this document says that lead is the cause of all these things. But have you ever seen a man shake his keys? Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Look at him jangle. Makes you forget about everything else you heard in the courtroom today, huh? Innocent. Well, what, what hold on, let's get that let's get that written down. Let's do this now. Let's close up. I rest. This is a good keys. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what they did. They probably like let it out the jury. They probably like made the jury breathe lead. They Drink were like, this. "Drink this." Like, okay. Uh, we find the defendant Spacey. Sorry, <laughs> butterfly. Oh we're gonna ride the butterfly. Thomas visually kept at the company line, telling a group of scientists, "Quote: So far as science knows, at the present time, uh, TL is o- the only material available which can bring about these." anti-knock results except for the other things that i discovered uh along the way that i'm lying about which are of vital importance to the continued economic use by the general public of all automotive equipment and unless a grave and inescapable hazard rests in the manufacture of tel its abandonment cannot be justified okay look a lot of you are worried about tel and what it does now i've been putting my hands in it to show you but now i'm gonna have a little sipsy poo Mm, that's some good tel right Oh, and now to show all the naysayers, I'm going to butt chug a little bit. So we've got a uh, a funnel here, and my buddy Hank here is going to pour a bunch of TL into me. What is the Mothman doing? Huh? Hear that? He's my agent. He's really good. He's a closer. In May 1925, the U.S. Surgeon General called a national tetraethyl lead conference to be followed by the formation of an investigative task force to study the problem. Hey, you know what's amazing is how we already know that lead (laughs) is a poison. So let's take it through the corporate slow red tape grind for a few years. That same year, Midgley published his first health analysis of TL, which acknowledged just a minor health risk. Quote, compared with other chemical industries, it is neither grave nor inescapable. And obviously, I couldn't write the book. My hands fell off a year and a half ago. I was putting them in. Never mind. Uh, so the government then held the TEL conference in D.C. in May 1925, which would be <laughs> followed by the task force to study the issue. This was the brainchild of no the TEL companies, oh, for God's GM, sake. DuPont, etc. People from both sides of the debate were there, but more on the pro side. One was Frank Howard, who was a vice president of the Ethel Corporation. Mm. He made what did he think? He made the argument that leaded gas was a quote gift from God. Yep, there we go. There it is. Lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. Well, if he wanted us to have it. By the way, all these gifts from gods, these are the same people who fought weed legalization forever. We got all these bountiful gifts from God. Coal, lead, marijuana's a sin. Don't burn it. You know what God wants us to have? Death air. Let me ask you this. When you smoke a joint, do you go to Butterfliesville? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, well. uh, Still can't smoke it. Buy this. Drink this. Put your hands in it. He also said... uh, it, quote, continued development of motor fuels is essential in our civilization. I need my daughter, Ethel. 
That year, Tablish, uh, Thomas, oh, I already said that. Uh, the task force was made up of industry scientists like Thomas Mitchley. Great. So that's good that he's evaluating this. Uh, there were no experts from any of the cities where TEL had been banned. Oh, interesting. Or any agency that produced a critical analysis of TEL. Interesting. Well, I think I, let's all be patient and see what they come <laughs> back with, because I have a pretty good feeling. Uh, so word leaked that another eight TL deaths had happened and more than 300 injuries had occurred at DuPont's Deepwater plant in, sure. I think, Delaware. Yeah, yeah, just because uh, the problem is still totally there. No, it's fine. Right, okay. Didn't matter. In January 1926, the task force released its report. It concluded there was, quote, no danger posed by adding TEL to gas. Quote, no reason to prohibit the sale of leaded gasoline as long as workers were well protected during the manufacturing process. Uh, there's but one downside. Uh, men's dicks get a lot bigger. So uh, that's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, they become better at that. Yeah. But outside of that, there's nothing. So They learn how to use them better, yeah. too. They yeah, yeah. Really I know they're better lovers in general. But if yeah. you guys aren't into that, then, you know, just figure uh, it out. If you don't want good, good lovemaking from men, that's fine. No, it's fine. So at that point, lead was pretty much here to stay. I mean, a lot of other stuff happened, but lead was in. Well, we had a task force, yeah. yeah, who overturned the uh, reality of lead. <laughs> so Midgley was then reassigned to the subsidiary company Frigidaire. Oh God! Oh what? So What's he going to do over there? Subsidiary of GM. Well, they want him to. We want to make people die at the fridge. Will you help, Tom? <laughs> How can we kill more people with refrigerators? Well, I think we make a freezer out of lead, and we make a lot of these areas out of lead, and instead of a butter area, it's a lead zone. They wanted him to find a substitute refrigerant for cooling systems. Mm, uh, okay. At the time, refrigerators and air conditioners used coolants that were highly unstable, chemical vapors that occasionally caught on fire. Uh, okay, well, let's so go with bad. lead. Let's that's, go with lead. That's not good for a fridge. That's not good. It could catch on fire. So let's kill the people at the fridge. Uh, refrigeration systems kill a handful of people a year. Okay, so let's get that number way up. That's a low number. So what do you, can we get that into the millions? Is that you think that's doable, or is that just a kind of a dream? In 1928, Midgley and his team developed the world's first chlorofluorocarbon (CBC), a stable mix of chlorine, fluorine, and carbon. It was marketed under the trade name Freon. Okay. It was non-toxic and non-flammable, so leaks couldn't kill you, and the refrigerator wouldn't explode. Uh, Dave, which is great. We don't want refrigerators exploding. Dave, it's time <laughs> for you to be positive. Uh, Dave, yes. I'm worried that this man has looked in the face of a good solution before and walked away. I'm a little nervous. Hmm. Also, Freon was non-toxic, non-flammable. A lot of great things. He held a press conference. I've discovered. He took a mouthful of Freon and blew out a candle. Okay, this guy needs to just start actually feeling like people believe his opinion. Or so. I don't know what's going on. He's lying. Like, this no, is, it's not water. This is, if you're, li you're lying on this level, like, it's, it's a level of, it's, it's, thou dost protest too much. Okay? Uh, he also dropped a lit match onto the gas. All right. And now to drink it and put a lit match in my mouth. While I also put my head inside of a lion's mouth. Huh? What do you guys think of this? I'm not sure what these things are anymore, but I'm a bit of a showman. I'm Science! really I'm really feeling myself here. The morning call wrote Thomas said, quote, the fumes in large quantity produce a queer intoxication accompanied by a sosmotic jerking of the muscles. Sobering up in the case of animals tested, he said is rapid. A dog staggering from the fumes sobered up in less than a minute. Monkeys and dogs breathing the stuff seven or eight hours daily for weeks develop some resistance to the, some resistance to the drunken effects. Uh, I just so there's a free on dog party going terrible on. Terrible for the dog no, no. and monkey you ever done poison whippets? session. You ever done had. whippets? It's kind of what the dogs are doing. Uh, eight, eight hours. I've never eight done eight hours. hours of whippets. <laughs> I'll say that it's great. No, I bet it. I bet it really loses its charm. <laughs> Uh, Freon began to be put in air conditioners and was soon the refrigerant of choice. By 1950, more than 80% of American homes had a refrigerator. Freon was uh, beginning to be used as a propellant in aerosol cans. It seemed like a godsend. F Freon, though, was bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> when chlorofluorocarbon gets into the atmosphere, it uh, is hit with ultraviolet rays, and it goes through a series of chemical reactions oh, that no. breaks CVCs down to a chlorine atom. A chlorine atom then reacts with an ozone molecule and breaks ozone apart and destroys it. 
So, uh, so the chlorine atom can also repeat this process. It doesn't break down. A single CVC molecule can destroy 100,000 ozone molecules. Okay, so essentially, you are now just making chlorine fridges? I mean... It's not the the fridge isn't chlorine. It's when it gets into the air. Sure, but you're essentially it's not great making like chlorine vapors. Well, you're making your refrigerator. Pure, pure, you're 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 able to keep your meat cold for a longer time. Also, also the sun is going to kill you. Also, nature's <laughs> decided to have a little fun with what your system is. <laughs> Turns out there's an ozone layer surrounding the planet that protects us from harmful rays. Well, we're doing what we can. Uh, Thomas probably didn't know this because he had no formal training training in chemistry. He sure. was just a mechanical engineer. But he ate a fridge at he one of his press conferences. Yeah. I will now eat this fridge. It's good for you. Oh, Jesus. Thomas received many awards, including the Priestley Medal, the highest honor given by the American Chemical Society. He was given two honorary degrees. He was elected chairman of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. Oh, my God. During World War II, uh, Thomas served as head of one branch of the National Defense Research Committee. He conducted extensive research to develop new synthetic rubbers. But then he got polio during the war. Hmm. He was left unable to use his legs and was in constant need of help. Okay. His final invention was a system of pulleys and ropes that helped him to get in and out of bed. Okay. And on uh, November 2nd, 1944, he died of asphyxiation after his own invention strangled him to death and oh it became God. tangled around his neck. What? He died at 55. What the fuck? The dude three stooged himself to death? <laughs> what? He did. He three stooged himself to death. That, when that goes wrong, when you're like, it's perfect, I'm getting in and out, but when you're like caught and you're like, oh, my pulley, oh no, this yeah. is, this will look really bad. Yeah. Um. So, 55 years old. At the time of his death, he was considered one of the nation's most prominent. Well, he did die doing what he loved. He did. Lying. <laughs> he, did. he was one of the prominent scientists in the country when he died. He couldn't have known the effect Freon would have on the atmosphere, but he certainly knew the effects of lead. Um, obviously, uh, lead was phased out of gasoline beginning in 1975 and was pretty much out of the market by 1986. Um but it was not eliminated because of its toxicity. It was removed from gasoline because it messed up catalytic converters. <laughs> of course. It's bad business. We'll have to recall some cars. And then they, there's a study. So it's a study that is like it's hard. It, it's not a study that you can say that's absolutely. It's one of those. So violence was terrible. Mm -hmm. And then as oh, wow. lead was, was, you know, taken out. It went down. Violence went down dramatically. So the violence in the 70s is insane compared to like the 90s. Right. Boy, that's weird. Just in all of society. Um, we're getting back. Yeah. In 1973, CVCs were detected in the atmosphere. And in 1984, scientists discovered a recurring springtime Antarctic ozone hole. The Montreal Protocol was signed doesn't, in 1987. Doesn't that feel like an adorable problem we once had? <laughs> now we're like, remember we were just like, there's a hole in the ozone? I mean, people were totally freaked out about it, um, I remember. But then also three years later, everyone got together and signed a thing to get yeah. rid of it. Everyone yeah, was yeah. like, hey, let's stop Let's yeah. stop doing this. Oh, yeah. And everyone's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. DuPont agreed to reduce and eliminate CVC production. So in this case, DuPont, which is a really horrible yes. company, still better than the Koch brothers. Right. The, and uh, Exxon and Shell and all the ones that knew uh, exactly what was BP. happening. Starting in the 70s. The worldwide production of CVCs was totally phased out by 2005, although three factories in China were just recently discovered. It was like pouring out of their factories. The CDC and the Department of Health and Human Services reported blood lead levels in Americans aged uh, one year to 74 years had declined 78% 78 between 1978 and 1991. Mm. When they did a study in like 1930, the amount of lead in the dirt on streets had gone up 50%. Well, what is so shady and shitty about the way that companies can poison people is that you don't, and there, and the, even when there is the, you know, there are like specific evidences, uh, evidence of like, uh, like in the, the Gulf spill and stuff, like mm -hmm. people having allergic reactions, to like Corexit or the water mm -hmm. and stuff. So there are, there are direct correlations, but then there's also these ones where it's just like, yeah, what does, 
put polluting the environment, yeah. put it, p having plastic and things that we're now eating. What are the cumulative effects of these that are yeah. not going to be something where someone's going to go, oh, it's literally because of this and this person lied about it. It's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, we just have this stuff in the earth now, maybe. I don't know. Do we? I have cancer. Oh, wow. What's it from? I don't know. Hey, is it good that it's raining uh, small plastic fibers in, in is that, Colorado? Is that okay? Is that good? Is that bad? Um, so in this in this case, the the planet got together to stop the ozone hole. Yeah. Um, so TEL continues to be used. As of 1996, 93 percent of all gasoline sold in Africa contained lead. Wow. 94 percent in the Middle East, 30 percent in Asia, 35 percent in Latin America. 1.7 billion people living in developing nations are in danger of lead poisoning. 90 percent of which is attributed to leaded gasoline. So. <laughs> I mean, it's like fucking DDT, you know, they, they or stopped Roundup. it here and yeah. they still kept sending it everywhere else yeah. or, you know, all that shit. Like, yeah. like when we, when we decide in America to stop using something, the companies still make it and they fucking send it to poor countries. Like, you know, it's why you need a worldwide socialist movement. Yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah. Well, the thing that I, the thing that I was uh, reading about earlier is the way that companies are like they're going to make protesting illegal. Like, well, they already are in some places. Yeah, and they, uh, it's already in, started. In Texas and yeah. other places, you can't protest against pipelines. You cannot protest against the fossil fuel industry. And so that is... It's... Again, the, it's... I mean, we talk about it. It's like it never... The stuff that... If you want to get your information from the news, you can't really be watching the person talking on the news. you got to watch the ticker. The ticker has all the stuff that in 10 years is the bad stuff. Yeah. It's just little stuff where it's just like, oh, they got rid of this regulation or they put this person yeah. here or, you know, it's just slowly the erosion of the line between oversight versus the, the monopolies that are making all the money. And the more that that line erodes and goes away, it's like a joke now. I mean, when yeah. you have Rex Tillerson in charge <gasps> of uh, being the secretary of state, I mean, it's just like... We literally should be in the Hague. Well, I mean, it, it is just like... The, you know, there is no oversight to this anymore. And that's why, uh, you know, I think you, there are a lot of positive signs when it comes to how people are fighting climate change. But this is a thing where it's like the people in charge who actually make decisions have to be the people who are also part of the movement and, and fighting it. Yeah, because I mean, look, otherwise you're going to get people who, like we have now, we just both had sides, the, the DNC both just sides decided not to hold deciding, the climate change Deciding debate. to shut it down shut because it down. they are making money. the elites and they are making money yeah. and they don't give a fuck about what party you vote for. They just want to keep making their money. Yeah, they really do. Um, so uh, the main sources for this were uh, The Secret History of Lead by Jamie Lincoln Kitman on The Nation, which is a really long, <laughs> fucking really long, sort of just bewildering <laughs> yeah. article about lead. Uh, Deborah Blum's two-part series, At the Door of the Looney Gas Building in Wired. Um, also uh, the BBC, uh, CityLab.com, and The Atlantic, Why It Took Decades of Blaming Parents Before We Banned Lead. Um, and again, Flint, Flint. <laughs> actively deciding to put lead pipes in, in place. And, of, and it's not just Flint. No. It, it's happening all that. Well, Flint story is all over the country. And, it's just fucking poor people. And the more that this stuff happens, the more that that water, That's that right. poor water that we all don't give a fuck about is going to get into our water. And then we'll be like, oh, shit. We should have cared about the poor water. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll be at the bar tonight through tomorrow morning, uh, drinking away this episode. <laughs> and uh, this is probably the number one requested uh, episode. Oh, that's good, Thomas Midgley. Oh, that's good. he sounds like a good dude. Yeah, he was good. He just uh, probably killed uh, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, and I will say the slight trade-off for having a man die from pulleys. It's pretty great. I mean, <laughs> gotcha. We signed police. Yeah.